eat, so it's the mold that dehydrates us? Oh my gosh, do you want 30 seconds on that? Yes. The primary mold toxin in coffee that survives roasting and brewing is called okra toxin A. It is a toxin that attacks your bladder and your kidneys. So when your body detects that you just drank this, it freaks out, it dehydrates your tissues to dilute the toxin, and you know this. <gasps> You ever drink coffee and then you have to pee 20 minutes later and your bladder's not full? Yes. Why did you have to pee without a full bladder? Because there's toxins in your pee and your oh body's like, get it out of here. This stuff causes cancer. Oh my God, I have chills all the way down my body. Oh, one second. Ah, <sighs> now that I'm back from emptying my half full bladder, Let's talk about this. So, ochratoxin A is a mycotoxin. It is a secondary metabolite of various species of mould. And yes, coffee beans are frequently contaminated with these species of mould and with therefore ochratoxin A. However, various grains, dried fruit, nuts, and even animal produce have been shown to be contaminated with ochratoxin A and frequently are, according to the research. So surely, if this mechanism is real, we would basically all be walking around needing to piss because we've been exposed to ochratoxin A and our half-full bladder is trying to eliminate this toxin from the body. So I don't think this is what's going on, but we can actually take this one step further because coffee isn't dehydrating in the first place. And we have really good data to confirm this. Studies have shown that 300 milligrams of caffeine per day does not increase urine output in people that are exercising. Other research has shown that three milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight doesn't increase urine output. Six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight did slightly, but that's quite a lot of caffeine. And therefore you would have to be drinking probably about five cups of caffeinated coffee a day to notice a little increase in urine output. And even then, it's not really probably dehydrating you. It's just not as good as hydrating you compared to water. So ochratoxin A is something we need to be concerned with, but not for the reasons that Dave explains here. I think the main takeaway for me is that we should probably just think about whether we should trust people wearing blue light blocking glasses in a podcast.